Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You stare down from the heights of your plane, and your brain keeps whispering, it's Masafuera, that's all it is. Just an island 300 miles off the coast of Chile. But both you and the beautiful girl beside you know it's more than that. It's the last stop, the last time around. A death trap from which there is no escape. Listen now as Escape brings you Tony Barrett's story, The Target. The drink, senor. You see how quick? Another one of your talents. You can make like a waiter when necessary, huh? In Chile, senor, a man does many things to live. Yeah. The waiter was busy, so I got the drinks. It's not a reason for anger. All right, Pepe. All right, forget it. You you are angry. Look, let's not play games. He's an hour late now. Where is he? Perez? He will be here. Yeah. I watch with great care. He has not come in yet. Trust me, senor. I haven't got much choice, have I? Is being late, is that part of the build-up, part of the sale? You demand promptness in informers, senor? You ought to be used to it by now, huh? Hmm. You never get used to it. Because you want something. An assurance that this time you're buying the right thing, the magic word. Senor. The whereabouts of Arthur Madsen. And you fall for it every time and move on to where the whispered words said to go. Caracas and Lima, Cochabamba... And now, Taltan? Taltan. Sit in one more crummy little bar. Wait for one more sly little man with a word for sale. How long you search for him, this Arthur Matson? A year. You watching that door? You sure Perez hasn't come in? You sure you know him? I know Perez, senor. Why don't you relax yourself, senor? Think, think of something of more pleasantness. Like what? Like the lady of great beauty in the next booth. From your country, is she not, senor? Yeah, way off base. Okay. A joint like this, she must be out of her mind. <laughs> well, that's fine. All we need now is our beef. Go see what it's all about, Betty. See, I'll be right back. Senor, senor Kennedy, come here quickly. Betty, what is it? Look, senor, there on the floor. Is he dead, senor? What do you think? That knife's got him pinned to the floor. I... I'm sorry for your sake, senor. What are you talking about? The dead one. He is the one you are waiting for. He is Paris. Paris. Another blank. Another dead end. What is it? What happened? Forget it. I've got to see. You wouldn't want to. It used to be a man named Perez. Listen, get me out of here now. Please, I can't be found here. Relax, it's a killing. Want a drink? I've got to get out, please. Peppy, wait here for me. Come on, lady, stay close to me. There's a cab. Aren't you coming? No, no, you'll be all right. Cops will be here in a few minutes. A lot of questions. They'll want answers. Tell the driver, Cuevas Hotel. Cartera. Viene la señorita al Hotel Cuevas. I'm at the Royale. Call me in an hour, hmm? 
Who will I ask for? Kennedy. Vic Kennedy. My turn. Eve. Eve Coleman. Your call. In and out. She was, she was lovely, senor. Yeah. Uh, what will you say if the police ask about her? That she didn't like blood. Uh, bueno. Come on, Pepe. You know what the deal will be. The cops will come. They'll see. They'll ask questions. And it'll end in drinks for everyone. Because life here is cheap, no? I didn't make it that way. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. We'll drink to Perez. Huh. He, he was an informer, senor. You always drink to a dead man. Even if you wouldn't give him the time of day while he was alive. If you say so, senor. I say. You, you are an unhappy man, senor. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, I'm an unhappy man. Once in your room, you will sleep, senor. I told you I want to talk. Come on. Buenas noches, senor Kennedy. Good evening. Any messages for me? No, senor. You sure? No phone calls? No, senor. I'm sorry. Get me Miss Eve Coleman at the Hotel Cuevas. Of course. You take it in your room, senor. I'll take it here. A momentito, senor. Senor, you sure you don't no, want... stick to... around, Pepe. Hola, por favor, la señorita Coleman está aquí. Señor Kennedy, you said señorita Eve Coleman. That's what I said. La señorita Coleman está aquí. Gracias. I I am sorry, señor, but there is no one registered there by that name. Señor. All right, all right, forget it. The lovely one who did not like blood? Yeah. This ain't my day. Senor, why didn't I you... I told you I didn't want to sleep. I want to talk. Well, well, well. Do come in, dear boy, do. Surprise? Yeah. I was under the impression this was my room. Not much of a greeting for a man who's come all the way from Hartford just to see you. Are you getting all your manners, Kennedy? This is Pepe Galvan. Mr. O'Brien, Pepe, chief claims man of the company that puts clothes on my back. Be nice to him. He's a big man. I, I think I better... Sit down, Pepe. Social call, O'Brien? Come 2,000 miles just to see me? You're spending company money. Oh, we've plenty of it, dear boy. Even after pouring your expenses down the drain. <laughs> Considerable expenses, I'd say. Sit down. Kennedy. You can take me off at any time you like. You got a better man? Put him on it. Oh, no, dear boy. Temper, temper, temper. Wouldn't be fair to you, would it, Kennedy? After all, Arthur Matson was in your custody when he uh, escaped with his bank's hundred thousand. You come all this way, just tell me that. <sighs> they have a new idea back home, Kennedy. That perhaps you're not trying too hard to find Arthur Matson. That from your point of view, it might be just the thing you don't want to do. I make myself clear. You don't have to fire me, O'Brien. I quit right now. Oh, don't be an idiot, Kennedy. You be telling them they were right. You never get another insurance job as long as you live. You know Santiago, Kennedy. Boats still run. I can get there. Why? Well, I didn't come down here just to fight with you. You got one last chance. Now listen to me. Masafuera is an island, three hundred miles off Santiago. I, I, I know where it is, sir. Uh, a return on an office wanted describes an American living there. The description fits Arthur Matson. You hear me? I heard you. Now take a look. Do, dear boy, do. Eh? And I'll tell them back in Hartford that you're still trying. Bye, dear boy. Bye. 
Pepe, you really know Santiago? Si, senor. You still got a job. Get down the docks, get passage for both of us for tomorrow. Si, senor. Uh, it's a three-day trip, you know, on a fruit boat. I'd have to make this one if it was a rowboat. Pick me up in the morning. <laughs> The cabin is not so bad, senor. You wish to... No, no, I'll go out on deck for a while. You unpack. Si, senor, I do that. I never even said thanks, did I, Vic? Vic? You're angry. No. You're angry. You helped a girl who never said thanks. And never called. Why? Was it too much trouble? Poor Vic. Sweet Vic. Pigeon Vic. See, si, senor, this is a Hotel Cuevas. No, senor, is no lady here by name of Eve Coleman. Sorry. <laughs> now, why? A joke? A whim? What? Not a whim. I want an answer. It's too long a story. Vic. I got the time. We got the time. You're wasting it. You're wasting it. <laughs> you talk too much, you know that? Yeah. Bad habit. Let's go sit down. I'll set up these deck chairs. Chair should always touch. Closer, darling. Better? You know, someday somebody's going to get smart and make a deck chair for two. You're quiet. It's the setup. To sit with a girl like you to look out at places with names like Antofagasta, Caldera. You could get to like it. Yes. Eve. Yes? Eve, the way you ran out on me in Talcan. Now you're here. Ah, questions. I can see them coming. Where are you going? To get dressed. I'll see you at dinner, darling. You'll be pleased. Senor? Sit down, Pat. You look like a man who is in love, but is not happy about it. Something wrong, senor? Old habit. Occupational hazard. You always add. If two and two don't come up four, it's bad. If it comes four too easy, bad again. Oh. Si, senor. I want you to get a radiogram off for me. To Hartford, Connecticut, to an insurance company. <laughs> What is it, Vic? Nothing. Ah, nothing, the man says, just like that. And his eyes narrow and his lips tighten and he wonders how to begin. And when I ask him, what does he say? Nothing. That's what he says. And he fingers a sheet of paper in his pocket, hopes I don't notice it. Very pretty. You're good with words. Vic. I got a present for you. A new set of words. And they hurt. Vic, please. Because they tell me something. That there is no Eve Coleman. Only a girl who calls herself that. A girl who's... Who's really Mrs. Arthur Matson? Yeah. That's who I am. Mrs. Arthur Matson. Any complaints? Any... Yeah. <laughs> Vic! <laughs> Hi, Vic. You 
are listening to The Target, tonight's presentation of Escape. And now back to Escape and the second act of The Target. It's Laura. Invite me in, Vic. You know the way in. They asked me if you were seasick when you didn't show for dinner. I'm sick. I missed you. Yeah. Did it hurt to stay away from me, Vic? Tell me how much it hurt. Get out of here. Is it the name? Is that what bothers you? Why don't you try it, darling? It's easy. Laura Madsen. Nice? What is it, will you? What kind of dame are you? You ask that? You? Look. At what? A child who reached for the moon and sulks because he found it a different color? You can't afford to sulk, Vic, not you. What? The last time I saw my husband was an hour after his escape from you. How does a little man like Arthur Matson get away from a man your size, Vic? How? He buys us. You're out of your mind. You want the price? $5,000. Arthur told me. He... Hurting me won't change it, darling. Doesn't change anything. He lied to you. You hear what I say? I don't care. Don't you understand that? Not about any of it. I love you, darling. I... I... Say it. I want to hear you say it. Vic? I love you, Laura. Senor. You find out anything? Uh, catch my, my breath, Where senor. is she, Pepe? Where? Uh, I tried her cabin every place. Every place. Uh, easy, easy, senor. I just found out from one of the seamen. He, he saw her leave the, the moment with Doc. She, she was the first one off. What? Well, she couldn't do... You sure? It's what he say. It must be so, senor. She's nowhere to be found. I'm sorry, senor. No. You take the stuff to the hotel. I got things to do. Be with the Santiago police most of the day. Uh, which hotel, senor? What's the best? Uh, Casa Santiago. Right on the beach. It's nice for swimming. All right, that's it, then. Last time around, might as well go first class. Must have been a long visit with the police. It's after eight, senor. Uh, haven't seen the chief yet. He's at the other end of the city all day. Should be here in any minute. Then I see you in the morning. Do you like the room and the radio? Yeah, fine. Uh-huh. Senor Kennedy. That's right, you, Captain Delgado. You're very late, Delgado, with much apology. For what? Come on in. For taking so long to return your call. Oh, forget it. You didn't know I was coming. But, of course, I did, senor. Your senor O'Brien said so. Sit down, senor. Drink? A nice idea, senor. Very nice. O'Brien phoned you, huh? Si. I think we talked for maybe 20 minutes. A long time. Yeah, O'Brien can talk. Here's a drink. Gracias. Acala lo que merezca, senor. Uh, my Spanish isn't that good. Translation. To each what he deserves. Mm-hmm. How you call philosophical, no? Yeah. Well, I'm sure O'Brien told you the whole setup then. See, si, everything. Uh-huh. What do you think? It's possible this Arthur Matson is on Masafuera. If so, he won't be hard to find. 
A wild island, senor. Beautiful, but no different than it was thousands of years ago. Primitive, huh? See, si. They will know if an American lives on that island. They? Don't you know? Oh, Brian, amigo, he asks me the same question, and I try to explain to him. Explain? Explain what, Delgado? The simple fact that Masafuera is just an island and that I have no, how you call, jurisdiction there. Comprende? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. And then we have no problems. None? Bueno, the day has been long, and the bed will be as a friend. If there is anything I can do for you here in Santiago, you will give me that pleasure? You've done it already, senor. And then I say good night to you, senor, and good hunting. I hope you find this Arthur Metzen before she does. She? The young lady. The lovely young lady who asks my lieutenant about Metzen only this afternoon. Where is not you? <laughs> Open your eyes, Vic. For me. Laura. Laura. <laughs> a man on alone on the beach at night is trying to wash something out of his mind. Oh, Laura. No questions? No, where have you been? I know where you've been. Doesn't matter. Say it, Vic. I want to hear it. I love you, Laura. Again? I love you. Oh. Sweet, Vic. Laura, is it? Worried, Vic. Matson, what are we going to do about him? Kill him, my darling. Oh. Why, Laura, why? You've always known you'd have to do it. Now, listen. You took a bribe, darling, remember? I don't want my Vic in prison. I want him with me. Close to me. Kill him, darling. Laura. All that money. Uh, little nothing like him sitting on an island with all that money. Our money. You hear me, darling? You understand? Our money, Laura. There's a plane in the morning. To Masafuera. We'll be on it. Together. We'll be on it. White man hunting, Laura? Oh, not eight hours of it. Delgado didn't tell me it was all uphill. Vic. Huh? What is it? Clearing just ahead. I think it's the top. It better be. Come on. In time for dinner, Mr. Kennedy. I waited almost a year for you. You're looking well, Laura. Tired, but well. Hello, Arthur. You want to freshen up, my dear? Arthur. And while you do, I'll entertain Mr. Kennedy. Show him what my island has to recommend it. Freshen up, Laura. <clears throat> Matson. Now, let me play host, Kennedy. I'm out of practice, but let me try. drink, Laura? Yours, Kennedy? <laughs> lost his mind. Is that what you're thinking, Kennedy? That Arthur Matson lost his mind? Matson, a man yeah. who shows you a shabby little house he loves and a stone terrace he built himself and makes you a drink, as civilized people do. <laughs> Values change, Kennedy. This is all I care about now. This terrace, the view from it, even the rocks a hundred feet below. A great lesson, Kennedy. From here, everyone's a little man. I'm glad you're happy, little man. How am I going to die, Kennedy? Will you use a knife? A gun? 
How? What's the matter with you? I don't mind. Not really. I've had a year away from her. A whole year. You'll pray for your island. It won't take too long. You're crazy. Laura's doing better with you, Kennedy. You're going to kill for her. I only stole for her. You stole for yourself, Matt. So, that's what she fed you. Oh, poor Kennedy. Shut up. Shut up. You told him I had the money, Laura? Lovely, lovely. Kill him, Vic. Now. What are you waiting for? Who's got it, Matson? Who? She has, you idiot. She's always had it. But I'm the only one who knows it, aren't I, Laura? With me alive, you'd never be safe. Never be completely sure. You're going to do your own killing, Laura. You let him live too long, Vic. He shouldn't have said that. Don't move, Vic. You're going to kill us both, Laura? Both. Like you killed a little man in a bar back in Town. I bought that, darling. You were getting too close. Say goodbye, Arthur. Nicely. Uh, not alone. No. I won't go alone. Let go. Vic, help. Help me. Under the direction of David Friedkin and Morton Fine, Escape has brought you The Target, a story by Tony Barrett. Featured in the cast were Whitfield Connor and Mary Jane Croft. Also heard were Edgar Barrier, Herb Butterfield, Hans Conried, Melissa Milo, and Jay Novello. Your announcer, George Walsh. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... You're at the end of a journey you've committed murder to make. A barren wasteland of India, silent, desolate. Where there is a cave and a carved image of the goddess Kali, whose heart is a ruby big as a grenade, and which is guarded by a smiling old man, from whom there is no escape. So listen next week when Escape brings you Ross Murray's story, The Red Heart of Kali. CBS Radio Network.